Welcome to Field to Fork Cooking with Abby J. Today's program is brought to you in part by Ingalls Supermarkets and the Ingalls Table. Now here's chef and host of the show, Abby J, to introduce her special guest for today's show. Welcome to Field of Fork, and it's August. It's the dog days of summer, mm -hmm. and I've got Carolyn Taylor representing the Ingalls table, but before we go there, we have a smoking hot issue. It's beautiful, Abby. I love the front cover. Well, I, I know, and it fits. The smoking hot sangria was mine, but you know, I, I wanna tell you, uh, Melissa Levels is in charge of this, and this magazine, this summer edition, has so many wonderful recipes to, to really, you know, make you comfortable, comfort food, and there's dog days, is you can have good days and bad days. Absolutely. We're in the South, Abby. It gets hot down here, but there's some wonderful, I cool, mean, refreshing, but flavorful and fun recipes that all of your viewers are going to just like. Absolutely. And here's a summer watermelon cake. And, oh. you know, <laughs> oh my gosh. And you know what? I've already attempted this for a little family gathering. It wasn't quite as pretty, but it was delicious. And that's all that matters, right? What a great. fun way to oh. get your kids involved and yep. have a, a, a nice pool party. Yep. yep. Anything like that. But you've also got uh, this... Um, I think this is a, a ceviche, ceviche. Ceviche salad. Yeah, yeah. Food. There you go. That's yeah. just kind of a, a nice light, uh, light uh, dish, and you have a. My lamb skewers are in there too, which Where are, are very they? good. Where are I, they? I don't know. They're but in the there lamb somewhere. skewers and, and this mojito salad. This is really, really. You know, the, uh, Ingalls has the best uh, produce section to where you can find all the fruits, everything to put together like Huge this. Huge organic section. They buy from local farmers in season. They bring in their tomatoes. They bring in their, uh, not avocados, of course, but they bring in all the fresh fruits and vegetables, the blueberries, the strawberries. Uh, even in the wintertime, the, uh, the Christmas trees come from a local farmer. The mm -hmm. pumpkins right. come from local par farmers. So it's I wonderful. love that about Ingalls mm -hmm. because even though you don't have to go to the farm, they bring the farm to the produce section at Ingalls and Absolutely. they make it happen, they make it work. And that's what this issue is all about, making the dog days of summer smoking hot. And what are you doing for us today? Okay, we're in the South, we're in Georgia, right? And I live in Western North Carolina on Taylor Ranch. And so we're gonna do something very summery and very fun. It's grilled peaches with, don't tell anybody, moonshine syrup and a really wonderful yogurt sauce on the side. So wonderful. I can't wait. Gosh, that it's sounds quick, amazing. It's delicious. Love it, love it. So You know, and peaches, Georgia peaches, I right. mean, everybody, I mean, you got South Carolina peaches, you've got Georgia peaches, but Peaches. Oh my gosh. I can smell them from here. <laughs> anyway, let's get started then. We're going to. This is, again, like the simplest recipe ever. Uh, if you're at a fruit stand, but listen, I got mine at Ingalls, and these are wonderful, and these are the Freestone, and they're really coming into season now. It's, uh, it's late July, so I've got four peaches, and I've already sliced a couple of them up, but this is nothing very and free complicated. And Freestone, you know, if I can say this, Freestone means it, it just moves away from the, right, there you go. Easy peasy. Right, so I've got four beautiful peaches, and we're gonna take a little bit of mola uh, sorghum molasses. If you're from the South, you know about sorghum molasses. If you can't find that or you don't have it, um, you know, just grab some honey. That'll work too. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna brush these peaches. Uh, thank you, Abby. We're you gonna brush that. them really just gently with this molasses. It's gonna be so delicious. And even though we're talking about a dessert, yes, we're gonna put a tad of salt on it. Just brings the flavor profile up, right, Abby? Right, a right. A little bit you're of gonna salt. Elevate, you're gonna elevate those flavors and you can find your uh, peaches all through August and, and then some because, you know, peach season starts around May and goes through mid-August. Yep. So. yep, that's exactly yeah. right. And these are absolutely gorgeous. And so I'm gonna take that little tiny 
bit of salt and I'm just gonna give them a little sprinkle. That also is probably, you know, don't uh, hold me to this, but this is probably gonna keep it from sticking a bit on the grill, but Abby's got a beautiful clean grill for me. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on the grill right now. Okay. That's the sound you want to hear. Yeah. You want to hear. That's yeah. exactly right. right. Well, we're going to start with the good stuff. We're going to go ahead and get our moonshine syrup. That's only going to take a few minutes, but basically we've got a half a cup of sugar. Okay. We've got three tablespoons. Give or take, mm -hmm. right, yeah. right, Abby. You gotta, you, you know, a, a, little shine. Bit, a little more is not gonna hurt, okay? <laughs> That's right. And for those of you at the Baptist church that I go to, the alcohol content burns right off when, right, you, when right. you cook it. So you get it to a certain temperature, you're only gonna have the flavor. It's kind of like vanilla flavoring. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then a little bit of lemon extract. Uh, excuse me, lemon. Excuse me. Vanilla extract. And I just eyeball that because I'm a cook. I'm not like a chef. And we're just going to take this to the grill and let it kind of uh, come together and get nice and thick. And then we'll be right back. We're back. And oh, I love the way those pe peaches turned They're out, perfect. Caroline. They're just perfect. Mm -hmm. And so we've got our really simple syrup, which was just a half a cup of sugar, a couple tablespoons of moonshine, and a dollop of uh, lemon juice. And I've got our lemon here. We want to put some fresh lemon zest in that. That really just takes it to the next level. Here's the tip, because I always like to give a tip. Don't get down into the pith, of course. You just want to get the lemon. The I can beautiful smell that. Lemon. That smells so good. I love lemon. I, I love, love anything tart. Lemon is yeah. my absolute favorite uh, sensation, I guess. It's more of a sensation to me. So there we go. So we've got our lemon and we've got our moonshine syrup. I'm just gonna okay. a little bit of zest in here. And we're, we're almost done, guys. This is the simplest thing. See how beautiful that is? It oh, got nice just, and thick. And just the aroma of all of those flavors coming gorgeous. together, Caroline. It's gorgeous. Yum. And we're gonna just drizzle this all over our peaches. You didn't think, you said, wow, I'm not gonna need that much syrup. Yeah, you're gonna need that much syrup. And this it's is something you can do ahead of time and every serve bit of as it. a mm -hmm. dessert or just a oh, snack, yeah. anything. Yeah, you could have the syrup already done and just warm it up to where it didn't get really hard. You know, you right. don't want that for sure. So we're good with that. Mm. Abby, if you'll just kind of sure. set that over there, don't burn Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. So we've got one more step, and this is the simplest here. thing ever. So I've got a bowl. Abby, you hand me my bowl, please? Sure. Here we go. So we've got our about three tablespoons of molasses. And do use the molasses. It's mm -hmm. so much better. I can't mm -hmm. even tell you. And then we've got some beautiful plain Greek yogurt. Don't get the mm -hmm. vanilla. It's not as good. Okay. It's just not as good. So put your, put about two cups of of the Greek yogurt in there. That's if they didn't right. want to use yogurt, could they use whipping cream and... You could. You could use ice cream, cream. with this. Yeah. Yeah. And Abby, will you grab me the vanilla again, sure. please? I'm sorry because we're going to use that in both ends of the dish. Sure. So we've got sure, sure. our molasses. There you Maybe go. Maybe about a teaspoon in there, Abby. There you oh, go. It's perfect. So you've got the plain yogurt, you've got the molasses, and you've got the vanilla. This is my go-to sauce. Years ago, I found this sauce, and I use it on everything. Fresh fruit, cake, pies, anything mm. just by itself. Put some granola on it for a little mm. late night snack. Right. It's so good. You're going to be tempted to go get the, plain, the vanilla yogurt. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Keep the plain. That way you can do whatever you want flavors. to do with it. You can it. add flavors. You can add any flavor yeah. you want. And again, the molasses is so much better. And they're just a plain old sugar. So what we've got beautiful this beautiful. Mm -hmm. Ooh. No, <laughs> I, I'm not a yogurt. Oh. That's why I said whipped cream. Ooh. I'm lactose intolerant. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. So whipped no, but cream that, that's good to know because cream people be. that people that are lactose intolerant, they can do different. any or just plain because it's got this yeah. beautiful moonshine yeah, sauce absolutely. on it. So we're just gonna do a little dollop here, right in the center, on every one of them. I might not do all of them today because I don't want 
Miss Abby to miss out on this. And this is it, grilled peaches mm -hmm. with moonshine syrup, a dollop of this beautiful yogurt on the side, and you've got a wonderful, cool summer dessert. And I'm so glad to be here with you today. Well, Caroline, what a beautiful presentation. And as I said, you, you come down here from North Carolina, She's been with iHeartMedia for 28 years. 28 years forever. Vice yeah. President of Sales, and, and you've got a lot going on, but you Indeed. are a great addition to the Ingalls table, and I'm so happy to have you today. And look at this, guys. You Beautiful. can make this for all your outings, That's and right. I can't wait to try it. So, we'll so be, good. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Abby, thank you for letting me come down and join yeah. you today. It's been a blast, and I hope your viewers enjoy the recipe. And uh, check out the next Ingalls table. Abby and I will probably be both in that, and it'll be yeah. so much fun. So join Absolutely. us again. Absolutely, and these look smoking hot. We'll be right back. Don't go away. More Field of Fork cooking with Abby J and her guest. We'll be right back. At Ingalls, we have a very special family. A family of farmers, ranchers, and dairymen. Clerks, butchers, and bakers. Deli workers, pharmacists, and florists. We work hard every day to bring you the very best. And we'll continue to wake up every morning and work as hard as you do. This is our town, and we built this community together. Ingalls, your neighbor for over 50 years. Welcome back, and guess what's in season? It's my favorite time of year, it's tomato season. And what I have here is an heirloom tomato. The reason they call this an heirloom is that they grow the heirloom from seeds. The seeds are passed on from one uh, harvest after another, and it becomes your heirloom. And that means the flavor continues and the profile of the tomatoes continues. So today I'm going to show you how to make a regular tomato sandwich that I love making during August, the dog days. And like I said, you have good days and bad days. It's going to be a good day when you have a tomato sandwich. And the way I make my tomato sandwich, I use one cup of mayonnaise and one cup of, of basil. And I put this in a food processor and you've got your basil mayonnaise, which elevates that flavor tremendously. So we're going to make just the regular um, tomato sandwich, like so. Let's see here. This. And you can get different tomatoes for color. You know, I've got some yellow tomatoes um, in here. But the heirloom tomatoes has got the most flavor. They have the most flavor profile of any of the tomatoes. People really seek these tomatoes out. So we will cut this into like so this is the best taste of summer to me is having your first if it'll stay together here all this deliciousness um, there you go and you can see all that deliciousness right here okay the next thing you might want to do uh, I, you know, we're in the South and tomato sa sandwiches are great for tea parties, brunches. So what you do is you just cut this out like so. You'll have this as, uh, this makes great croutons. So don't throw this away. And then you've got the other piece to do like so. And what we want to do here, we'll take the basil mayonnaise like this. Put the tomato on it, cover it, do each one. And you want to get the tomato about the same uh, size of your bread so it's not overflowing. There we go. You can't use too much of this um, basil mayonnaise. It's really great. And what you want to do you can take a dollop of the little mayonnaise right here on top, put on each one to dress this up. And what I've done is I've got some fresh parsley and you just add to the top of that like so and they become very, very inviting, delicious. So there you have it. This is the best way to 
cool off in the summertime. You've got your uh, little tea sandwiches here to serve, you know, for brunches, uh, you know, just to have friends over. And there you have it. That's what's in season is heirloom tomatoes, any kind of tomatoes. Have fun with it and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Field of Fork and our road trip this August brings us downtown Hartwell to visit my friend Omar Vega, which has come a long ways in the food world. And he has rolling chefs and he's getting ready his dream, it, a restaurant, 329 Bar and Grill. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, ABJ. It's a pleasure to finally meet you and be part of this beautiful show. Uh, I can say enough and we are happy and thank you for the opportunity Absolutely. and we're excited that you helping us uh, bring and explain our concept to the community. Absolutely and you, you know one of your concepts is a love of mine which is spicy Mexican. You, you, you do Mexican food. Absolutely you know my background is Mexican so I'm very well knowledgeable in Mexican Cuisine, authentic. Mm -hmm. um, I learned from my mom since I was a kid. That was part of my chores. So, and, uh, but uh, I've been working in American industry for so many years. Uh, you know, cruise lines, hotels, casinos, okay. and so that's where I got. I learned my trade, mm -hmm. and after a while, decided to go to culinary school, and that's how everything started. Work for different companies uh, all around the U.S. and uh, in Europe, South America, Central America. I worked for corporate America for oh. several years, and it. Uh, it's my passion. I will not trade it for anything else. So one thing I forgot, he had a food truck. The food truck turned into Rolling Chefs, yes. right? And, and explain what Rolling Chefs is all about. Rolling Chefs basically, it was a dream that uh, I had where I wanted to have people to be able to enjoy a steak, a pasta, or uh, seafood but on a drive through environment. It's like going to McDonald's, but instead of getting a burger, you get a right. steak, you get a, a salmon and things like that. And I think it was very successful. It, it paid out with the food truck. Then we went, we bought Rolling Chefs right here in uh, 107 North Forest in Hartwell. It's a drive through online order, paid off. And now it brings us to 329 Bar and Grill, right in the downtown of Harwell. Well, I commend you. He is following the American dream, guys. And you Absolutely. are an entrepreneur to do this. And your love keeps, you know, your passion keeps driving you. And it's driven you to this new 329 Bar and Grill. And you guys have all got to come down and try it. So tell us a little bit what you will be uh, specializing in. I know you've got a full bar, beautiful bar, beautiful restaurant, but some of the things that you'll be doing here. Well, basically, uh, what we specialize, what we want to bring to Hardwell is a little bit of everything with the uh, American cuisine, with a little bit of everything where we have all kind of dishes, for, you know, uh, mm -hmm. from pastas to steaks to right. chicken dishes to seafood. So whoever, if you have a party of 40, maybe you don't want a steak, but you want a nice piece of salad. You're gonna bring variety. We bring variety, variety, and you know, variety is the spice of life. Yes. So, you know, that's, that's what everybody needs here. Like if I go out and I'm not that hungry and I want a salad, or if I want something even lighter, I mean, just an appetizer, that's what, uh, it makes the world go round. Yes, and that's what we want. We want a, a great selection of dishes, all made from scratch. Everything is fresh. Authentic. Authentic, yes. I mean, I'm the butcher and the chef at the same time. We cut our own meats in-house. Oh, that means so much to do local. I know you support local. You have to. Yes. You buy from Ingalls Markets. She was talking earlier absolutely. that you get all of your, uh, you know, your produce and things yes, from absolutely. Ingalls Markets. Ingalls and then all the community around here shops there. There's been definitely a big supporter of anything you, we can find. A specialty items, you'll find it right there. You know, you need Brussels sprouts, you need anything, tofu, you name it. Fresh tomatillos, organic, everything, you can find you it right there. you make your own sauces. We make our own sauces, you know, salsa, sauces, gravies, we make it all in-house. Nothing is frozen. Uh, the only thing that we got frozen is french fries. 
But other than that, well, who fry. doesn't like a good French fry? Yes, right. You know, I cheat every now and then. <laughs> we do too. I mean, but yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, that's what we want at 329. Uh, and it is open to all types of social people, you know, it's that uh, it won't break your wallet and it's a nice environment. Uh, the food is fresh, a little bit of everything. And that's what we need in Harlem. Are you going to do parties and uh, catering he out of here or is it mostly going to be the catering out of Rolling Chefs? I think right now Rolling Chefs will stay with the catering because okay. I have no idea how it's going to go once we open. Right. And that, uh, so I don't want to put too much on my place that I cannot well, handle. Well, you got to, you've got that together. You're yes. going to expand into this and, and really specialize in, in this type of service to where you offer a specialized menu. Yes. Uh, and that really means a lot. And this restaurant, guys, looks great. How many can you seat here? The dining room seats about 70 people. The, uh, um, and the bar can sit another 25 to 30. So a full capacity, we're talking about between 90 to 100 people. Mm -hmm. So it's not too big, not too small, and it's good. You know, we only open for dinner. We're not opening for lunch. We want to make sure that we do things right. Everything. That we do things right. Right. Absolutely. You can't stretch yourself. When people start being open all day, and I know with finding good help, is a problem. It's been uh, a challenge. It's been, yeah, it's been a challenge. So I think that's great that you just open enough to where you can do things right. Exactly. Uh, it gives us the opportunity, plenty of time to prepare, plenty of time to create a plan, to make sure we have everything in house that we're going to sell, that we're going to serve, and be ready the time the doors open. We welcome our guests and we take care of them because we are made from them. We will right. not be here if it wasn't from our guests. So we want to make sure that we give them the best customer service and the best food. I'm going to make sure that the food coming out of the kitchen is going to be the perfect. And you know what? On that note, we're going to be right back and show you what that looks like. Don't go away. More Field of Fork cooking with Abby J and her guest. We'll be right back. At Ingalls, we know that folks are excited to get out and explore their summer, and we are all in. So whatever your summer holds in store, our store has you covered. Ingalls, we're with you every step of the way. We're back. And Omar, it just got smoking hot in here. Indeed it did, um, actually. All right, well, let me tell you every day. On Tuesdays at Rolling Chef, it's Taco Tuesdays. We have from 10 to 15 different types of tacos, fish tacos, street tacos, salmon. Thai tacos, salmon tacos, you name it. We have different types of tacos, different types of sauces. We have from Mexican sauces, we have salsa verde, Guajillo, tomatillo, so mild, mm. medium, and you're super speak, hot. You're speaking my language, and you know what? I'm glad we're here on a Tuesday. <laughs> yes, right? So what better day than some tacos? Taco Tuesday. And all this stuff right here, you can buy it. You can make your own tacos at home, and you can buy it locally. At any Ingles stores, you can find it in the Latino section. You can find everything right here. Well, I'd rather push the easy button and come to Rolling Chefs on a Tuesday, and yes. I'm going to check out 329 Bar and Grill. Guys, he's opening uh, in August, first part of August, so stay tuned. The menu will go up, and Omar... Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Abby J. Thank yes, you so much, absolutely. everyone. Thank you for joining us on the show today uh, for our special guests from the Ingalls Table, Caroline Taylor and Omar Vega. And we uh, hope you have some good days during dog days and make it a great summer.
Thanks so much for joining us for today's program. We look forward to having you back next time on Field to Fork Cooking with Abby J. This program is brought to you in part by Ingalls Supermarkets and the Ingalls Table.